If anyone told me a Cameroonian movie produced five years ago would be this educative and entertaining at the same time, I would have screamed, no way. So I recently got to sit down and had an interview with some of the cast and crew of Standard 7, like Chifu Chenwi, Lumnora, Tobo Cedric, and the director, Mr. Menkemzi, where they share some of their experiences while making the movie Standard 7. So what is Standard 7 about? Standard 7 is a story of an epileptic boy named Vincent who comes from a very poor background and he suffered several seizures. He was constantly being bullied by his classmates and he was termed a witch by the entire community. As if that wasn't enough, on the eve of his exams, Vincent's life took a drastic turn. Standard 7 is an amazing drama now streaming on YouTube and Noble Arts Entertainment, so be sure to check it out. But for now, here's the interview I had with some of the stars and director. Of Standard 7. Standard 7 was inspired by the story of a young guy who came to Noble Arts Entertainment and who really loved acting. But uh, we had this session and he came in, introduced himself, he talked about his passion in filmmaking and acting. Then doing that, uh, he has a session, he had a seizure. And then after that, I never saw him again till today. So um, that pushed me and triggered me, uh, the need in me uh, to want to. Uh, be able to understand what epilepsy is really because I mean growing up there were a lot of mysteries about the disease there were a lot of mysteries about uh, the fact that I mean a lot of conspiracy theories that if you touch somebody who has epilepsy you're gonna have epilepsy if you just epilepsy is a, a, it's an airborne disease just name a few so when I did research I discovered that it was all a lie and I wanted to demystify that and of course whoever the guy is I hope he, he's watching this he should know that the day he left Noble Arts Entertainment, we thought of him and we made a film to, to be able to tell his story to the world. Vincent is this young boy who suffers from epilepsy. Um, he suffers from the stigmatization that came his way from friends. And why not some other family? He was loved by no, apart from his mom and the only friend um, he had, Vera. Vera is a very loving, compassionate, soft-hearted, intelligent young woman who, who loves people around her or who cares about the well-being of her friends and the people close to her more than herself. I'm okay now, so good. I'm okay now. That kind of character for me. You dance open eye. No, it, yes, nobody use the word open eye. That's he get a lot of open eye. That's he is trouble for take ends you not belong for you. In fact, all team like grandma came home. So now like, they kind of go that way. Grandma came there. You know that kind of category. You know you don't pass. You can't. You don't pass. Anything you collect, anything you collect, right? Yeah. That's what you collect. So that's what grandma came there. I kind of go that thing. I think love. Love, love, I think love and bullying and bullying especially because I can relate so much to bullying. Yes, I can. I'm that one person that, like, when I'm in the street, when I saw the bullying, I, I was that one person that could so much relate to bullying because I've been bullied before, man. Just seeing that again, I, it just, just, just brought back some old memories. So, it was just one of the things bullying, love, care. Mockery and you know, the first one of the biggest I'm saying is hatred, jealousy. Those are some main key points that Stanislav portray. You have a lot of jealousy where if you look at the aim, you never know where the jealous part is coming from, but you have that trigger of jealousy in Stanislav. Love, of course. Love is present, compassion, um, patient, I think, from the direction of the mom, of Vincent's mom. Mm. Um, the experience was amazing. The experience filming um, Standard 7 was amazing. Uh, like you said, you, uh, I mean, we worked with a lot of first timers. And if you know Noble Arts Entertainment, you know that we, we, we really value giving people the opportunity to showcase their talent to the world. I mean, with this particular team, that is not like the first time we are working with first timers. So it was really interesting because I saw first time <coughs> cinematographers sound recordist actors giving their all to be able to to tell the stories sto tell this film and tell the story in such a way that people can connect to it five years later 
And um, it was really humbling because at some point in time, I had to uh, uh, turn to be a parent. I had to be a father figure to be able to motivate people to work. And I had to, I had to be a director and I had to also understand that people were also learning on the job. So it was challenging for me because there were times when you needed, I needed people to be like very perfect, but of course they were struggling. But also it was a very good experience for me because if there's one thing I really took out of this particular project, is patience and tolerance. Yeah. I think it was not just about playing league, but it was more about futuring in the movie. Because even if it was just walk out past and say hi, I just wanted to be in front of the camera. Like, I just wanted, I just want to be an actor. Even if just to say good morning and pass, but now coming to you playing actually the lead character in the movie, it was just something, it came with a lot of pressure, a lot of anxiety. There was a lot of, I was so excited. I remember that day when I was casted, after the audition and I was casted, I think I just, I could not sleep that night. It was like they bought you a, 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 a new Christmas dress and you, can just, you, you can't wait for the 20 feet so you put on that dress and walk out so everybody can see you so it was it was just yeah it was so exciting well um the first thing i i really want people to take away from this movie is the fact that uh epilepsy is not as bad as we we, we grew up knowing that's the first thing and also uh, when people actually receive a lot of love care and attention they can actually achieve anything irrespective of their medical condition and the third thing is um irrespective of who you are uh love is the greatest gift you can give her anybody yeah um i think the first time i watched somebody for for the, the, somebody had um had, had a seizure i just could not stand there at that point like i could not stand there i like i ran for my life like i just could not watch like i was shaking and the person fell right really, really close to me. I think I was way too young. So it was really, really, it was just something I could not, I could not stand. But after reading the script, going through the movie, like you said, when I read the script, like it was just more like, um, um, it just had more, more of like, um, the educative part of it, which I think I hope most, most people, most people see that part because I, for one, being an actor, I learned a lot because right now, if, I think if somebody right now like falls behind me, I think right now I might know what to do. Know what to do maybe to help that person to save that person's life. So it was not just more like entertaining, more like acting movie, but it was more like a learning process for me as well. Yeah. Well, um, first of all, the film is a very beautiful film. <laughs> Cinematography, directing, acting, top notch, and of course sound. Uh, the next reason why I think somebody should want to, to watch it is because it represents an entire misconception of an illness that has passed, that was that has been passing down generations, and I think um, if you love uh, uh, learning, this is a film you really want to watch because we are tackling epilepsy from the perspective of a young boy, a primary school child, and how he achieves success even living with um, epilepsy. And another reason why you should watch the film is because this is. Um, uh, a, a film that highlights the experiences of um, primary school children. So most of us, we, we grew to become adults and the truth is that we sincerely miss those experiences. So this film gives you that opportunity to remember and also just leave the experiences you had during primary, your primary education for a moment, right? And gives you that opportunity to just feel like a child once more. So. If you're an adult wanting to feel like a child, this is definitely a movie for you. If you're a medic and looking at maybe other perspectives as far as I'm using video for, for change, then this is also a film for you. And if you're just a young person curious about um, epilepsy, about filmmaking, of course, it's still a video for you, yeah. They have a powerful message. And I always insist on every message because watching a movie or making a movie is not just about entertainment. You understand? The main end of the movie is not for entertainment. Yeah, you may watch a film and laugh and look at things, but there's a point that we always touch. So, I want everybody, if you're watching a movie, put behind you that you're not just watching a main movie for entertainment purposes, but you're watching a movie because you want to gain knowledge. So, we will be able to watch the movie to pick out the message for which Tanasana have 
Salasa is a whole package. It's a gata. I mean, you get bomb. You understand that? Until you watch the bomb, you digest the movie, then the bomb will explode. I understand that Seven has a lot of information to pass out to the general public. Information on how you could treat the closest person to you, next to you. Information on how you could manage a particular disease. Information on how you could treat your friends, your classmates. Anybody around you, it just has a lot of information that needs to be passed out to the world. So if you want to watch Standard 7, you should be ready to get educated in every way. Okay, um, it took five years for this film to be released because one, um, looking at the sacrifices that the cast and crew made, personally, as director producer, I wanted to make sure that it was valued. So um, the whole idea was to get it maybe in flights. Uh, we wanted to get it on Netflix. We wanted to get it on Amazon Prime in, cin Amazon Prime in cinemas in Nigeria and Ghana. Like, I mean, it's not a secret. In Cameroon, the, the film industry is still developing. So we don't really have these avenues and these markets for the films we, we produce. So I took the film a couple of times to Nigeria, like meeting uh, distributors and pitching the film. And the general feedback I got was like, beautiful film, beautiful story. We can relate to it, but there's no Nollywood face in it. So it pushed me to Ghana. I went to Ghana and this, the same problem, uh, I was like, there's no Ghanaian face in it. So it was very challenging. So I had to look at all the options, try to go like in flight. It didn't work. Netflix, it didn't work. Amazon Prime. So I, I mean, during that time, of course, the years were passing, right? And before I discovered it was already five years and I asked myself, I was like, okay, maybe it's time to just show the world the amazing film we made. And for the film was edited the same year it was produced. So it's not like we had some issues with the hard drive. No, the film was edited and ready for the market that same year. But now I really wanted to go the extra mile to show the world this masterpiece and be able to show the world our original. Because I feel like this is one of, if you count Cameroonian original stories, this is actually one of them. That everybody who has gone through the basic education sector in Cameroon can relate to it 100%. So I really wanted the world to see that. And so, of course, it took time going through all these doors and knocking. And finally, we're on YouTube. And I, I mean, I'll be honest to say, I regret that I didn't think about YouTube five years ago. But the truth is that uh, at some point, too, I cannot regret because five years ago, YouTube is not what it was in Cameroon. So I could not take that risk five years ago. But I'm happy that the week is paying off. People are watching the film, they are giving positive comments. And it's just amazing the feedback we have been getting. And imagine a film we did five years ago resonating with people in 2024. It tells you how powerful it is. And it tells you how intentional we were when we were making the film. I just felt like after like maybe two days, um, two weeks, two weeks or maybe a month, the movie will be out. But the month passed, a year passed, the second year passed, and nothing. Like I was, there was a lot of pressure. Like it was on my neck. When I got casted, um, like my parents, they, they were supportive of the fact of uh, we me going to that set. But I said, you know what? <laughs> this is my first ever future film. I think this is the opportunity I've been waiting for. This is that time. This is that season. This is the time I've been waiting for. This is that thing I've been waiting for. And I said, you know what? You know what? Whatever, whatever happens, I will be on this set. So I went for it and it's a decision today that I don't regret at all. I don't regret the decision. I think this this is one of after watching the masterpiece, this is one of the best decisions I've made. I've made and I'm coming to watch the movie. The 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 the, the fifth years uh, the fifth year I think it it was what it the the weight was the weight the weight was what it the weight was what it like it's a masterpiece and I urge every one of you to go watch if you haven't watched yeah. so when we finished this movie and after a year or two we didn't see results personally I was my morals was down. Like, I've done a couple of movies and I haven't watched the finished product. Then, coming to this, I still haven't watched. You know, it's one thing to put in um, a lot of energy, you put in your all in something, and you don't get to watch the finished product. So, it was just demoralizing for me, but <laughs> it is what it is. And that fateful day, there was a premiere, and they had to put the movie on a big screen and we were like, wow, <laughs> it was satisfying somehow. So you just tend to forget the four or five years you've been waiting and you're just in that moment and doing everything. 
the scene where we were doing the race in school, the on the Abayas go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the most memorable scene because I had to be shy and be in love and be and be pretending as though I am not. So <laughs> that that for me was the scene. Um, when shooting that scene, um, when we were rehearsing, like the director said, okay, yes, you know what, we need to rehearse this scene before before the the, the, the proper shooting. I think when we were rehearsing, I think when I walked through down when Vera was following me, um, I think there was a woman passing by, and when he um, when and he was just passing by, he was just directly in front of me, and when the scene just started, I was like, Rrr. and the woman was like, oh blood of Jesus, healed in the mighty name of Jesus, be healed, be healed, be healed, and it was just like I I just. Couldn't stop laughing, and it was kind of like a fulfillment. Like, okay, you know what? What you're doing is good. What you just did is good. If somebody could actually believe that what you did, if somebody could believe that um, this was reality, then actually, I think I really embodied my character very well. And the, that that scene, especially in the scene, we have to ask Vincent to go and buy me ten Accra and six Alaska. Take this to the Tainero. Go buy me ten Accra. Eh? Do you know what? At the cost of 25 hours. So I was like to myself, this guy didn't have money. And who is this guy going to get money? To get 10 Accra and 6 Alaska. And finally he came out with it. That was a shocking part of it. He came out with those things. I was like, wow. This guy is rich. But I feel much about I see a job. Um, the filming process took close to two weeks. So we were in football for close to about two weeks and um, it was overwhelming because the contextual realities of football were completely different in terms of what we had here, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of logistics, in terms of even access to basic amenities. So um, it was challenging, it was beautiful and of course it was a learning process for each and everyone who was on that particular set. We were sleeping on the floor and some days, some days we were eating rice and some days we were eating our imaginations and drinking water. So that particular process actually um, uh, was very, very, very challenging, but of course at the end of the day, very satisfying. We want to thank each and every one of you who has been watching and supporting um, Standard 7. It means a lot to us. Um, I just want to use this opportunity to say a very big thank you to each and every one of you who have been supporting the movie Standard 7. For those who have watched, thank you. I want to say a very thank you to, to you. And for those who haven't watched, please make sure you go and watch. I want you to see this other side of me. Let's go. <laughs> thank you so much, guys, for watching, for liking, for sharing, and of course for commenting. Thank you very much. We do appreciate I want to thank you so very much, especially those who have not watched Standard 7. <laughs> yeah. Because I know after watching this, Definitely, you go to my app page yeah. on YouTube and watch Tana 7. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Tana 7!